Now, from Daniel Wagner, CEO of Country Risk Solutions, is joining us on the line via Skype. Daniel, hi there. Thanks for being with RT and, and joining us on the line from Connecticut there. Now, as we've seen, the mainstream media has been boosting public sympathy for the rebels. Uh, what impact does that have on the conflict? I'm not sure it's going to have much uh, impact on the conflict. I'm not sure what people would expect the government to do. Uh, governments all over the world do something very similar when they're under attack. Oh, I think then, what's interesting well, you say here... the mainstream media, when we see so much of this, and it does appear to be kind of one-sided, depending on your point of view, you're saying it doesn't have an effect on the way that, 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 that these um, conflicts turn out? No, I really don't think so. I think people already have uh, decided which side of the coin they're on. They understand what the media is. They understand what the media is not. Mm. And it seems to me unlikely that uh, someone is going to choose to defect to one side or another based on the position that they hear in the media. I think what their family, their friends, uh, their patriotism, their uh, allegiance to one side or the other has much more to do than, than what the media may say. We have seen incidents, though, haven't we, of even the most respected uh, media outlets picking up anti-Assad stories, airing videos like, well, this one we see on the screen now, allegedly showing rebels executing Assad supporters who've been airing it all day today. What does this kind of reporting mean for their viewers trying to get them a, a real picture of what's going on? Well, clearly, it's, uh, it's a, a troubling picture. Uh, I saw the video also. I don't see how anyone can watch that and not be moved by it. On the other hand, uh, if you happen to be from the anti-Assad side, many people would say this is either payback for what government forces appear to be doing or reportedly are doing in Aleppo, or if, you're a if, if they consider themselves to be a freedom fighter, then this is really no big deal because this is what they need to do from their perspective on the way to Damascus if you will. Um, I think ordinary people uh, will, will, will be shocked when they see that type of video. But let's be clear about what type of conflict this is. It's going to be lengthy. It's going to be bloody, even bloodier than it's already been. There's a lot at stake. So these types of atrocities, unfortunately, will occur. And it's, it's always a, a problem when it does. Now, one of the rebels in that footage uh, later spoke to the media or somehow uh, con contacted the media and got a message across saying our forces often capture a handful of soldiers loyal to Assad, create courts, then we execute them. Now, why have we not heard more about that? Well, I think there's a certain amount of uh, filtering that goes on in any media outlet, no matter which side it's coming from. The important thing to me is which direction in the, is this conflict going? Uh, it seems very clear based on the level of defections that have occurred, and there are something like 38 or 40 that have occurred, mostly from the ranks of the military uh, thus far, that uh, this is becoming an increasing problem. When you have President Assad getting on national TV for the first time in two weeks, as he did today, and basically urge his own troops to fight the good fight, it seems to me he must feel under pressure and he must feel that this is a must-win battle. What? And indeed, the stakes are very high. Well, I've got you on the line. We've only got a minute left. Just wanted to talk about those recent reports that the opposition is now thought to have acquired surface-to-air missiles via Turkey. Who do you think is behind those supplies? Well, your guess is as good as mine, Kevin. I think we can, we can all speculate about that. Uh, well, undoubtedly, speculate it's... for me. Speculate. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I don't know that I want to speculate because I don't have enough information. But okay. clearly, uh, it seems very likely that this would have been the work of uh, either a foreign intelligence agency or some foreign government that is uh, clearly interested and anxious in uh, rooting Mr. Assad from power. Uh, I think we're going to see more of these types of reports. It's inevitable here. If I were to put a time frame on what's going to happen next, I would say we're going to see a very critical juncture here in the next month. And either Mr. Assad will be able to survive and as, re retain the support of uh, Russia and China, or the tipping point will be reached. All right, Daniel Wagner, thanks for your thoughts, CEO of Country Risk Solutions. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kevin.